Hey everybody, this is Basketball Loving Dr. NBA. Today, I will introduce you to a player that did all kinds of bizarre acts to change the mind of a guy who wouldn't give him any attention. He tried to physically get close with him and stuck by his side to make him always think about him and he would blow in his ear hitting that sensitive spot. But of course, he did get rejected a lot in the beginning. And even though he embarrassed himself in front of people all over the world, he tried several times with different acts. And in the end of all that, he eventually won the heart of this man by playing air guitar. Uh, anyways, he who didn't care what people thought and showed off his unique personality traits, Lance Stephenson, is the main character of today's video. And he later became famous in the NBA. It is said that his basketball style was like an untrained wild horse and he did whatever he wanted. We will get into what kind of player he is in this video. Nineteen ninety, in the biggest city in the states, New York, Lance Stephenson was born. He was very talented and had a strong attachment and self-esteem to basketball ever since he was young. And that carried on to the neighborhood basketball courts. From early in the morning to his curfew at night, he would not leave that place and he would face off against people that were bigger and older than him all the time. And because it was streetball, it was a rough environment with very high egos. And so his competitiveness definitely grew more than normal players. And that eventually became his specialty. And he was talented enough to be quite known in New York. So he went to a prestigious high school where many NBA players graduated from and started his career there. Lance had the mindset of surpassing all those players and competing against 400 schools in the public school's athletic league and he won four championships in a row there. And even in a bigger league in the New York State, he had already won the championship in his 10th and 11th grade, averaging 28.9 points. And in his graduating year, out of all the high school players in New York history, he set the record for most total points scored. And so, he took over all of New York, and he became the top prospect in the US and was ranked 9th overall, at the same time enrolled into Cincinnati University that was located near a lot of prestigious universities. From there, he also got the spot of key player, with an average of 12.3 points. He wasn't just the top scorer in the team. But out of the 16 schools in his conference, he had the most points out of all the freshmen. And finishing his first year successfully, Lance entered the 2010 NBA Draft right away. And the reaction from all the scouters that have seen him play was very negative. And that reason was because of Lance's obstinate personality. He was acknowledged for his athletic abilities and his basketball skills, but he was not mature enough yet, so he would get into it with refs many times and get into non-stop confrontations with his teammates. And aside from that, in his private life, he was arrested before for sexual assault in high school. But despite all these disturbing risks, there was one person who decided to pick Lance 40th out of 60 players. And his name was Larry Bird. The former NBA legend was the GM for the Indiana Pacers. He put aside everything else and only focused on basketball talent and signed Lance with a four-year contract. And Larry Bird put in a lot of expectation for Lance Stephenson. But only two months after his draft, he was left disappointed because Lance was arrested for assaulting his girlfriend. But he did somehow figure things out and he did start the 10-11 season. But he could only put up an average of 3.1 points in 12 games and was demoted to a garbage oh. member. And even though he started off on the wrong foot, he didn't lose all of the trust of Larry Bird. So in his second season, in the 11-12 season, he was given more chances by the head coach. But even so, Lance was still a bench member, and the amount of playtime for half the games he played was less than 10 minutes, and it looked like he would finish the season without any luck. But 
in the last game of the regular season, he was given a huge opportunity. The main key player had injured his knee, so he had to fill that spot and play. Lance, on his first start, surprisingly had a 66% field goal rate and a 50% success rate on three-pointers. Also, he didn't make a single turnover and put up the most points from both teams with 22 points. And because so, in the next season, he had become a starting member, and at the same time, he showed performances that fit that role. He had a great fighting spirit throwing his body around all over the place. And he had a bigger presence than all the other players. Especially because his play was so dynamic, there was no clue where he would go. So from the fans' point of view, it probably felt like watching a circus show or something. And the passes in that process, to all the old fans out there, probably reminded them of the legend who took over the NBA in the 80s with his passes, Magic Johnson. That's how unpredictable his passes were. The opposing players had no choice but to be shook by this. And sometimes, Lance left veterans with their ankles broken. Shooting, dribbling, passing, and rebounds, this 6'6 six six shooting guard had every skill that was needed. As if he was trying to prove Larry's scouting ability, he showed various types of skills all over the place. In the next 13-14 season, Lance, getting two-digit numbers and three stats, he had put up the most triple doubles, and even though he wasn't the main key player, he played his part to the fullest. And so, the Indiana Pacers were first in the Eastern Conference. And of course, he had a potty mouth and was selfish at first. And his relationships with his teammates weren't so great. But no matter the case, the Indiana players and Lance Stephenson would take that momentum to the playoffs and win the first and second rounds. But, the next opponent in the third round would be the number one superstar in the NBA. LeBron James and the team he was leading was the Miami Heat and Lance had already lost twice to them so not wanting to lose again he did all sorts of ridiculous acts to stop them first off he followed LeBron around all over the place and annoyed him like crazy he would hit him in the chin and push his crotch in his face and for all these acts he of course didn't apologize because he had a very shameless personality, if he was to be pushed slightly, he would flip out and over-exaggerate. And he even leaned in to hear the opposing team's head coach explain a strategy. LeBron was so dumbfounded by all of this, he was eventually left done. And when Lance Stephenson blew into his ears, hitting that sensitive spot, LeBron eventually could not help but laugh. But even though he did all these acts to stop LeBron, Lance would be destroyed by him, and for three years could not get over the LeBron wall. But because he had Larry Bird, who was the GM that adored him, he was offered an extension contract with a fair amount of money. But Lance would reject this offer and move to the Charlotte Hornets. And from there, his career had become a complete mess. Lance Stephenson had found a new team. But because of his selfish personality, he had bumped heads with the players of the Charlotte Hornets frequently. And not even halfway past the season, his name was put up for trade. And the Indiana Pacers tried to take him back. But because he had terrible teamwork, a couple of players on the team didn't nope. want him returning. And Lance had become more and more detached in that atmosphere, and only had a 17% three-point success rate showing his performance had dropped drastically, and the rest of his stats had dropped as well. As soon as the season ended, the Hornets quickly sent him over to the LA Clippers. And even though his performance was somewhat returning back to its normal state, he was treated like a pet and was sent back and forth all over the place. For two years, he went from the LA Clippers to the Memphis Grizzlies, then to the New Orleans Pelicans, then to the Minnesota Timberwolves, and in every team he disappointed the coach with the mistake he had made. And even though he was complimented for his various skills ever since Indiana, his play was actually really dull and not flexible. So he had ruined the flow of offense many times before in the past. And he wasn't exceptionally talented in the first place, and was kind of in that gray area. 
so he had a lot of show-off skills that could make the highlight reel but was not productive at all. But because so, he was disliked by many of the teams. Eventually, his value went from 9 million a year to 1.2 million a year, and even would become a short-time contract player, playing 10 days for 140k. Plus that, he wasn't even able to extend that as well. So in the 16-17 season, he was left as a free agent, and Larry Bird, seeing this unfortunate situation, decided to bring Lance back. Returning to his home team after living a life of moving around, he played the remainder 6 games and entered the playoffs. But, he met LeBron James once again, who had moved from the Miami Heat to the Cleveland Cavaliers, and was unable to do anything and fall in the first round by 4 games to 0. Lance Stephenson facing the 17-18 season, and even though he wasn't a starting member anymore, he became the sixth man who was considered the best out of the bench members, and showed his skills without any regret. With his quick movements and animal-like instincts, he showed more fancy skills than ever before. His versatility enshrined on defense, and with the funny and ridiculous facial expressions and gestures, he took the flow of the game for the Indiana Pacers. But his playing style had not changed, so he still made mistakes just like before. And he would act like he fainted mid-game, and was pretty much the same guy from before. But these comedian-like acts had changed every time he faced against LeBron James. These two had faced off again in the first round of the playoffs and Lance was ready to get his revenge for getting eliminated four times, and he annoyed LeBron more than ever. He stuck onto him like glue, and to get on his nerves, he pushed down LeBron's head, and later, he just pulled him down from the collar mid-air. This kind of tenacity was so strong that he would destroy the opposing player's screens, and Lance did not shy down from anything in any situation. And at the end of that, they finally put Cleveland in a tight spot. As a result, LeBron James would lose his cool, and like Lance wanted, he would get offensive fouls. And so, Indiana won in the sixth game by a 34 point deficit, and Lance entered the seventh game with the momentum on his side, and for the finale, with a reign of 45 points, would get shut down. And the beast that destroyed Indiana was again LeBron James. Because they had fought for so long, maybe they had a love hate relationship. So LeBron James didn't want him as an opponent anymore. And when he moved to the LA Lakers, he brought Lance with him. And like a fairy tale, these two had become close right away. And Lance, who was in charge of getting the momentum up, would try even harder than before to get the team going. After succeeding in making a fancy play, he would dance around as a ceremony. And the most famous celebration he had made was him playing the air guitar. Sometimes it looked like he was taunting the opposing players, so he did get warned by the refs. But Lance didn't care, and with his fancy plays and continuous guitar ceremonies, he brought a lot of interest and joy to the NBA. After spending a joyful year in the Lakers, in the 1920 season, he played in the first division Chinese league. And like a former NBA player should, he showed great skill there. Only two months after he had joined, he entered the 2019 The Terrific 12, and he led his team to the finals. And against Korea, he put up 34 points and won the MVP title and the championship to go with it. Since his skill is still decent and he's only 29 years old, and ever since the coronavirus has stopped the season from February 2020, he has been trying to re-enter the NBA. But even though he had gotten the attention of the Indiana Pacers, all the NBA games have also been stopped, so he's resting at the moment. With his ridiculous acts, his bouncing around playing style, 
in his jolly performances. Lance Stephenson always brought joy to the stadium, and many NBA fans still remember him to this day. If there are more players like him who don't care what people think about them and show their personality traits, I feel the NBA would be much more entertaining to watch than before. Okay, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll be back with better content next time. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe.